In this video, I'm going to show you the easiest method for soft modding a PS2 FAT and using hard drives over 2 terabytes within them. Ah, the PS2 FAT, the classic system that it is. It also remains one of the best to soft mod and use an internal hard drive to run games and homebrew from. Thanks to this system's ability to run from a hard drive, it also makes it very easy to soft mod. And in this video, I'm going to cover those steps as well as how to use hard drives over two terabytes if you'd like to run them. The process for both is relatively the same, but there are extra things for the XFAT formatting. But a modded PS2 system is really cool to have in 2023, so let's go ahead and dive in. Now as we get started, there's a couple things you're going to need. This tutorial is for the 30,000 and 50,000 series PS2s. The earlier 10,000s are a bit different. They require a different method of hooking up a hard drive. So you're gonna need a model that uses the official Sony network adapter hard drive expansion bay here. And I recommend getting these guys SATA modded because that is just going to give you the easiest method of getting a modern hard drive in here just to save you a lot of peace of mind on trying to track down an IDE one. So there are numerous mod kits available on sites like eBay, Amazon, AliExpress, so they should all pretty much relatively do the same job. You could also buy the third-party adapters that are just SATA, but the problem with these adapters is they don't include working network ports, so if you want to be able to use network functionality, you are going to need to mod the official Sony adapter. Next, you're going to need to choose a drive that you want to install into your PS2. So, the official supported size is just 2 terabytes. so this is the biggest you can go without any extra XFAT drivers or anything like that. And so for today's example, I'm going to start off with a silicon powered 256 gig SSD. And I have a little enclosure for that to make it fit better into the drive bay, so link to this will be in the description below if you're interested. But again, two terabytes is the max you can normally use with PS2 formatted drives. But we're also going to cover how to use four terabyte drives as well using the special builds of OPL. So again, two terabytes is the limit if you plan on using free HD boot to run your PS2 off of. But there are options for running four terabyte and larger drives on PS2 now but they will require you to have a memory card to install free MC boot onto, otherwise it just isn't going to work. But the process is relatively the same regardless of what you want to do, and I will just walk you through it as we get to it. Now the next thing you're going to need is a way to connect your drive up to your computer. There are numerous drives available. I'm actually using a old stripped down SATA to USB converter board that was inside my drive, but things like the Ugreen will also work just fine. And now the last thing you're going to need is a USB drive that will work with the PS2. So in today's demo, I'm going to be using this PNY 64GB Elite XFIT USB 3.1 drive because it works wonders on the PS2 and it's easy enough to get set up for use on it. Now onto the software side of things. The first thing we're going to download is the unofficial free HD boot newbie package from GBA Temp. This is going to be our entry point. We're not actually going to keep using this image because there are numerous reports about how using a pre-made image like this will cause data corruption once you get past the initial 8 gigabyte limit. Now that being said, I have used this image for years in a PS2 without any issue, but I'd rather not deal with any potential problems. So we're going to go ahead and use this as our entry point and then just install a fresh version of free HD boot over the top of it to make our lives so much better. Now we need to download HDD raw copy tool to write that temporary image to our hard drives to make it our entry point for PS2 soft modding. So link to this will be in the description below, but you can just go ahead and download the Windows executable. And this is a Windows tool, so if you're doing this on Mac or Linux, you're going to need some other way of writing image files to a hard drive. But anyway, for Windows users, you can just download the Windows executable. It's portable, so just nice and easy to use. Next, we're going to grab the latest version of the free MC boot installer. So this includes tools to install free MC boot as well as free HD boot. So download links to these will be in the description below, but just grab the latest version of 1966. And then you can go ahead and grab the latest version of open PS2 loader as well. So download link to this will be in the description below. And then the last thing we're going to need is GUI format from RidgeCorp Consultants to get our USB drive formatted into FAT32 if it happens to be larger than 32 gigabytes, which mine in this demo is. So I'm just gonna get this downloaded as well. 
With everything gathered up, go ahead and just get everything extracted to make our lives simpler later on. So I'm just gonna tell everything to extract to its own individual folder for now. There we go. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is write our free HD boot image to our hard drive for our temporary exploit. Now from here, go ahead and get your hard drive you're gonna be using for your PS2 projects plugged into your computer. Now, for those of you that are using your larger format drives, that's good. That's fine, it'll still work for that process. You're only gonna have two terabytes usable for this first part, which is A-OK. -okay. But go ahead and open up HDD raw copy. And once it's finished loading up, go ahead and scroll down until you find the file option here, double click on it. And now open up that free HD boot temporary image. So there we are. Once that is selected, go ahead and press continue. And now navigate down until you find the USB drive that you are using for your PS2 projects. Make sure you don't select any of your other drives by accident. You will delete everything that's on them. So please pay attention to what you're doing. If you're dumb and overwrite something of yours, that's on you, not me. So here we go. Here's my USB drive. And you can see this is a 256 gigabyte drive. And once selected, press continue and it'll give you the source file that you're using and then your target destination. So once again, triple check that you have this correct because if you screw something up, but anyway, go ahead and click on start to start the process. And it's gonna say, hey, data is gonna be overwritten. Just go ahead and click on yes and then just let it do its thing. And once the task is completed, just go ahead and close out of HDD raw copy tool. We're all done with that. And then you could just go ahead and disconnect that drive from your computer. All right, now we're gonna prep the USB drive for our apps. So go ahead and get the USB drive you're gonna use for PS2 plugged in. All right, so there it is. So once again, this USB drive needs to be formatted to FAT32. So if it is over 32 gigabytes, you are going to need to use the GUI format tool to do so. If it's under 32 gigs on Windows, you could just right click format and then select FAT32. But as you can see, that's not an option for me since mine is larger. So just gonna get this formatted into FAT32 real quick. Make sure you have all file explorer windows closed before trying this, otherwise it'll air out. But just make sure that you have the right drive selected once again. If you screw up, that's on you. And then just do the format. And there we go. So there we go, properly formatted FAT32 USB drive ready to go. So I'm just gonna get the latest version of OpenPS2 loader added into this drive real quick and then the free MC boot installer added as well. And with that set, we are ready to move on. So just go ahead and take that out. All right, now to prep things on the PS2 side. So first thing I'm gonna do is just uh, plug in this USB drive here so I don't have to worry about that later. There we go, get in there. And now to hook up the hard drive. So again, since I'm using that Say to SSD, I have this adapter here so it'll fit better into the PS2's bay. But just got to essentially line it up and throw everything on the floor. That's good too. Uh, anyway, there we go. Easier to do it like this. So just line it up. And then slide it on it. And now we'll get it hooked up and booted up and show you where to go from there. All right, so go ahead and power on the PS2. And you should see the free MC boot image pop up and that means that our entry point is successful. Now do be aware that there are some PS2 models that can't boot from the hard drive bay automatically and for those few select models, they will need to have some other exploit to trigger to get you able to boot Launch Elf and then to install the proper HD boot. The chances are very slim, so this again should work for the majority of PS2 FAT users. But anyway, let's go ahead and get the proper version of free HD boot installed here. So just go ahead and scroll down to the U Launch Elf, W Launch Elf section. Just load up W Launch Elf 4.43. Really doesn't matter too much, but whatever. From here, enter the file browser, so just go ahead and press circle to do so. And then make note of the buttons that are set at the bottom. By default, it should be circle is okay. But anyway, go ahead and scroll down to the mass option here and press circle or cross, whatever you have set as accept. 
navigate into the free MC boot installer menu. And we're gonna go ahead and launch the free MC boot installer XFAT version. Once the free MC boot installer has finished loading up, just go ahead and press R1 on your controller to get over to the extras menu here. And this is where you're going to install free HD boot. And again, this is for those of you wanting to run hard drives two terabytes and under. So anyway, just navigate down to the format HDD option here and press cross to accept it. And it's gonna warn you that all of your hard drive is going to be deleted, that's fine, tell it okay. Now we're gonna click cross on install free HD boot. Free HD boot will be installed onto the hard disk drive. Continue, yes. Now just wait for it to do its thing. And there we go, installation complete. So now you can just press circle to exit out of this program and then just press okay. And now when your PS2 reboots, you're going to be on the latest version of the free HD boot installer as it is meant to be and you won't have to worry about any of your hard drive data being corrupted past that eight gigabyte limit. But now you can go ahead and launch back into WLaunch Elf. I like to use this HDD version. I don't think it matters too much, but it says HDD, so I like it. But going into the file browser, if you head down to the miscellaneous section here, go to the HDD manager option, and you can see all of your stuff here. So very nice. But now we could go ahead and copy over the latest versions of OPL to our hard drive. So that way we could run it directly from there. So going back down to the mass tab, Go ahead and mark open PS2 loader. So again, pay attention to your little status bar at the bottom, know which buttons to use. Now press R1, go ahead and do a copy. Go up to HDD zero. And there's a number of places you can put this. So you could create a new apps partition if you want. There's one already included with free HD boot called apps. So you can paste it right in here. There's actually a version of open PS2 loader already in here. So if you want to just put it in that folder, go right ahead. And then you can delete the older version of open PS2 loader because it is not required. There we go. But now you can just head down to the misc section here and then just press accept on PS2 browser. So that way you get back to the main menu of your PS2 so we can configure things to work off of our new hard drive. All right, so navigate down to the free HD boot configurator. Go ahead and select your button layout. Navigate down to configure OS D sys options. Configure item. So number one is selected by default. Just go ahead and scroll until you find open PS2 loader here. There we go. Now press your accept button on this option. And then you can press the clear out button here to clear out all of the old options that we're not gonna use. And under path one, navigate down to HDD zero. Go into that free HD boot apps folder or wherever you stored your latest version of OPL and then just select the ELF file. Click on return, click on return, and then save the configuration to HDD zero. And there we go. And now when you launch into open PS2 loader, it's gonna be on that latest revision. And there we go. So if you're planning on just using free HD boot with a two terabyte limit, you are now ready to go with loading up your games, apps, and anything else that you can think of that you wanna do with your modded PS2. Now, for those of you hoping to use four terabyte and larger drives, the process up to this point is exactly the same as what you saw with my 256 gig SSD. But I'll show you what we're gonna do after we get that initial image burned onto this drive. So just go ahead and get it connected to your PS2's network adapter. Oof, so much heavier. And then get that plugged into the back of the PS2. And then go ahead and get a memory card that you want to install free MC boot onto. So I'm gonna be using an official eight megabyte card today. Anything up to the 64 megabyte cards typically work, but unfortunately these 128 megabyte guys always seem to fail in my tests. So don't be using anything like that. So official eight megabyte cards are definitely the best option. But again, anything from the 64 and under has typically worked. You can also find pre-modded free MC boot memory cards on Amazon, but I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about doing it yourself, so whatever. So for your four terabyte drives, just go ahead and get the PS2 booted on with that initial image burned onto it. 
and just wait for it to go ahead and boot up and do its thing. Mechanical hard drive so much slower than an SSD. Yeah, it's trying to read it. Look at that. Look at it go. There we go. So there we go, our exploit entry point has been successful on the four terabyte drive. Now make sure you have that USB drive inserted into your PS2 as well so we can access the free MC boot installer. So once the free HD boot menu has loaded up, just go ahead and launch one of the uLaunch ELF variants. Press circle to enter the file browser. Navigate down to the mass option here, press circle again. And now load up the free MC boot installer XFAT version. And once the FreeMC boot installer has loaded up, make sure you have your PS2 memory card inserted into slot one or two that you want to install it onto. So on the main menu, just click on install. It'll say it'll be installed on the memory card. If you have multiple memory cards inserted, you'll choose between slot one or two. Now you're gonna choose which type of this PS2 and similar units is just a fine default option. If you wanna use this card on multiple PS2s, just go ahead and choose every PS2, and then every PS2 to the same region if you don't wanna to have to worry about the region variants. So I use this exploit card across a couple different PS2 versions, so I'm just gonna choose every PS2 of the same region for my demo here. And I've used this card for free MC boot before, so it found a config file, so I'm just gonna tell it to get rid of that so you can see what to expect. But just go ahead and wait for it to do its thing. And once the installation is completed, just go ahead and press cross on OK. And then go ahead and power down your PS2. So just shut it on down. Now go ahead and take that hard drive out of it. And we're gonna move it back over to our computers to format it into XFAT. All right, so for Windows users, I'm gonna be demoing for you specifically, obviously, because I use Windows. But we're going to get this drive formatted back into XFAT format. So if you right click on your start button on Windows 10 or 11, you should see a disk management option available here that you can click on. And if you had this drive formatted into PS2 format, you'll get an initialized disk prompt. And we want to make sure that we have GPT selected as our partition table. So that way we can use all four terabytes or higher of the storage medium. So just go ahead and press OK on that. And there we go, so there's our four terabytes drive for this demo here. So just gonna right click on this, new simple volume. Next, make sure all the space is selected, come out to a drive letter. And under file system, we are going to check XFAT. And under allocation unit size, go ahead and select 512K. Then you can put a volume label if you want to, I don't care. Then I go ahead and press next and finish. And there we go, that is now ready to go. So you can go ahead and close out of the disk management option here. And now inside of your hard drive here, we're gonna make two new folders. The first one is CD. And the second one is DVD. And these are going to be needed for OPL to see your games. So for this demo, I just went ahead and copied Ace Combat 5 over to the hard drive real quick so we could demo it working. But with that, I'm gonna be done with the hard drive for the time being. Now, unfortunately, the latest version of OpenPS2 Loader that is on the official repository still doesn't support hard drives that are over two terabytes. So we are going to need to add Grim Doomer's variant to our USB drive and use that instead if you wanna use drives over two terabytes. This may change in the short future, but as of me recording this, that is what still has to happen. So go ahead and get that USB drive you're using to copy apps and stuff over to your PS2, plug back into your PC. Now go ahead and download the latest version of OpenPS2 Loader Beta from Grim Doomer. Link to this will be in the description below. So just gonna go ahead and download this. Now that that's downloaded, just gonna get it extracted. And there's three ELF files included in this one. So if you want to have faster transfer speeds, you can use the UDMA Plus version. Or if you don't wanna have to worry about things, you could just grab the standard OpenPS2 Loader version there. And then there's version for emulating pads. But I'm gonna go ahead and grab that UDMA version right there, and there we go. So with that in place, we could just go ahead and disconnect everything from the computer and get it hooked up to the PS2. So now when you boot up the PS2, you're gonna be brought to the latest free MC boot menu here. 
So we're gonna go ahead and scroll down to the free MC boot configurator to load up that latest Grim, Grim Doomer version of OPL for our PS2 FATs for greater than two terabyte drives. So once that loads up, go ahead and scroll down to configure OSD sys options. Go ahead and scroll over to the open PS2 loader option, press cross. Then you can clear out the old paths and we're gonna add in the new one. Now, since the hard drive on your PS2 FAT is greater than two terabytes, it's not an ideal location to store your homebrew. So using the USB drive is going to be great or you can move things over to a memory card if desired. Leave it up to you to decide which one you wanna do. But for me, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave things in my USB drive. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select the mass drive here and select that Grim Doomer version of OpenPS2 Loader. Now I'm just gonna click on return. Return. And I'm gonna save that configuration to my memory card in slot one. Then just gonna exit out. All right, now back on the FreeMC boot menu, just gonna load up OpenPS2 Loader. Once OPL is finished loading up, go into settings. And so now you can go ahead and set some settings in here. So if you wanna have the PS2 logo pop up, you could do that. Remember last played game, right? Operations, cache and games lists. But head down to the BDM start mode here and go ahead and set this to auto. And now over on the block devices, you can go ahead and turn on the BDM devices you're gonna be using. So USB needs to be on by default, but if you plan on using something like an MX4 SIO, that's available, but of course, this video is all about the hard drive, so we're gonna make sure that that option is turned on. Then you can mess with the display settings as well, if desired, so there we go. But once you have everything set, just go ahead and click Save Changes. And once that's finished, you can press Circle to go to your games list. And there we go, there is that copy of Ace Combat 5 that I put on the drive for our demonstration purposes. So there you have it, the easiest method to soft mod your PS2 fat using free HD boot. And again, you can do this with drives up to two terabytes to run free HD boot natively, or you can install free MC boot using this method and switch over to greater than two terabyte drives for your PS2 projects. Both options work equally great, and it will just really come down to your preference on whether or not you want to have more hard drive space on the system or not, so your choice. But thank you so much as always for watching today's video. I hope it helps you get your PS2 projects up and running to your desires. A homebrew enabled PS2 is really incredible. There's so much you could do with this system and so many fun things still being figured out and developed for it. Like it's just a ton of fun, even 23 years later. But here at the end, I have the usual favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like dislike button, depending on how much you like today's tutorial, as well as that sub button notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Load's always coming your way, and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. Now, for anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep it going, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing all of this content directly to you. Big shout out to all of our current backers. Thank you, as always, just for being incredible champions. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.